These boots were made for more than just walking. They explored America, stormed the beaches of Normandy, and covered the feet of generals. There's even a pair on display in the Smithsonian. It's American to the roots. Over Fry's history, they've made countless styles of boots for both men and women. It's the durability, it's the comfort. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that man can wear it, a woman can wear it. For their 150th anniversary, an old favorite gets a retool. We wanted to do something that was Americana. This is the American Harness Anniversary Boot. Fries are just as likely to be roughed up on country roads as they are to be perched on motorcycles or walking city streets. You can wear it with anything you want, and it looks good whether you're running around town, whether you're working in it. For every Fry boot, quality starts at the very beginning. If you don't have good weather, then you're not going to have a good shoe. Fry uses more than enough leather in one year to blanket Carnegie Hall. In the past year, we cut over 700,000 square feet of leather for Fry boots. They test the color, the weight, and the finish. A machine called a lastometer uses ball bearings under air pressure to test the strength of the leather. The main thing I will always look for in the leather is weight, make sure there's not very many scars, has a good break, make sure the lastometer doesn't break the leather, and just good color. Boot manufacturing has its own set of lingo. The vamp covers the toe, the counter encloses the heel, and the uppers fit around the calves. Each of those boots are made up of approximately 70 parts. Cutting the leather is the first step. Sharpened steel cutters and 20 tons of pressure stamp out the pieces, which then move to the fitting department. That's where we actually take the two-dimensional parts and fit them together into a three-dimensional boot. The American harness is stitched with a pattern of stars and stripes using a computer-assisted machine for precision. As a top stitch, I trim. Then I go back and put a second row in. A lining is stitched to the individual pieces. Pigskin is used because it has pores, making it breathable. After I finish sewing and stitching, it'll go to another girl in this department who will do the vamping. The vamp, the part that covers the toe, is sewn to the front upper, making up the front half of the boot. The counter, the part that covers the heel, is sewn to the back upper, making up the back half of the boot. You want your outside leather, your inside leather, and the counter all to become one piece. The two halves are stitched together. This leaves the boot inside out. So we developed this boot turner. We put the top of the boot in, and when it comes back up out of the tube, then you've got the boot with the finished side out. The counter, or heel, is then molded. The fit of the boot in the heel area is very important and a key fitting feature. You don't want it to slip in the heel. The top of this fry boot is complete. At this stage, the counter and the vamp are assembled, but they don't look much like a boot. To create the foot shape, a plastic form called a last is inserted. It will be removed when the boot is nearly finished. We tack the insole, which is the foundation of the footwear, to the last. The edges of the vamp and counter, which is the toe and heel, are nailed over the insole into the last. A hot steam process softens the leather and takes on the foot shape of the last. That's where we uh, apply box toes, it's the box toe and the harness on the boot that really define its style. It gives it that Western vintage look that have the rings and straps and clips on them. Next is the welt, a strip of leather that connects the upper, the insole, and the outsole. The welt is what makes it easy to re-sole the boot. You just have to take the welt off and re-bottom it. First, the welt is stitched to the upper and the insole a tedious task that was done by hand until Charles Goodyear, the son of the man who invented tire rubber, revolutionized the shoe industry by inventing the Goodyear welting machine. So Goodyear welting really changed kind of what shoemaking in its entirety was about. The soles of the regular harness boot are made of neoprene. Neoprene is the synthetic material used to make wetsuits for scuba diving. Neoprene is an improvement over rubber because it performs very well in flexibility, in cold weather or hot weather. The 150th anniversary harness boot gets a special leather sole with a neoprene heel. A super strong cement adheres the sole to the welt. We will actually heat activate the urethane cement. Next, 
The bottom sole is stitched to the welt using another Goodyear innovation, the Goodyear Stitcher. That gives you the white stitching on the bottom of the boot, and it gives you the color stitching on top of the welt at the same time so that you're framing that boot with that outsole. Then it's on to edge trimming, where the toe and sides of the outsole are shaped. There are no guidelines. It has to be done by eyeing it. First thing you got to look for on these boots when you pick them up, you want to look to see where your stitches are at so you don't get too close to them and cut them. It's all about finesse at this station, but with a blade running at nearly 10,000 RPM, it also needs a good set of nerves. It's extremely dangerous because it's nothing but teeth and there's no shield or guard. Once it has a nice, smooth edge, it's ready to move on to the scraper. Now it's got to go up to the scraper over yonder. They put a small lip on the bottom for a little fanciness. It's at this point the plastic last is taken out of the boot and the heel is nailed on. It's one close shave after another as the heel takes its turn on a different blade. And this portion here has to be shaved off and smoothed down. This gives the design to the heel. Well, all you have to do is just follow the pattern. Follow the pattern on the shoe where they have already trimmed it back this far. I start here and go around to the other side. The heel will be smoothed out further, then inked and waxed. Finally, tacked, nailed and sewn with a finished heel, the boot is ready for inspection. We actually feel inside the boot for tacks. We also have a camera mounted where we can view the inside of the insole. A cushioned heel pad on top of the insole covers the tacks. All good on the inside, it goes for a QC on the outside. We look for the heights on our heights, and, and then we look at the toe trim, make sure the finish is good on them, and look for any scars or scratches or cuts. From the first cut to the packaging, it takes 12 days to finish one boot, and 70,000 harness boots are made in this facility every year. We're really the last eyes to look at them before they go out in the box to go to the customer. It's taken 150 years of manufacturing to turn this footwear into an icon. We want to be part of everyone's life, and we want our products to be part of everyone's moment. 